What's up, little beardos? It is Lord Beardo bringing you a brand new Clash Royale video and... Ah, uh, there has been so many things that has happened in Clash Royale in the last 10 days for me. It's been pretty crazy. We got the Miner, the Electric Wizard, the Log, and the Princess all in about a 10 day span. Now, Clash Royale, why did you wait so long to hook me up with some of the best cards in the entire game? And then there was 2v2 and I don't know if you guys were around on the stream but 2v2 is by far my favorite thing that I've ever played in Clash Royale even beyond the cards even beyond the miner and the log and the electric wizard and the bandit challenge and all these fun things that we accomplished the 2v2 challenges were 100% my favorite part of the game but we are going to jump into something that developed because of the 2v2 because of trying to have one of these mid level decks some something that it, it accompanies playing with aggressive people it helps playing with the defensive people and one of the big things that we learned through the 2v2 and right before the 2v2 and I think it has a lot to do with chip damage cards being able to get the miner and the log and certain things like that is play Playing counter attacks, going in on counter attacks, being able to play defense at the bridge, not letting somebody stack up completely because you're willing to push that miner, make them spend a couple elixir here and there, worrying about their defense so that when they do set up for their beatdown pushes or bigger pushes, you can play that defense on the bridge. So that is what happened here. That's the deck that was constructed because of this. And a lot of these cards, like the Electric Wizard and the Princess and the Musketeer, they're very heavily defense-oriented cards. Now, don't get me wrong. When you get that Electric Wizard to a tower, Little Beards, it absolutely smashes and it absolutely crushes those towers super quick. The main push that you want with this deck right here is going to be to put the Miner directly in front of the tower and try and time it up so either a Musketeer or a Princess is coming over the bridge when it pops up, like almost confuse them for a second, and then the Fire Spirits will connect on the tower and that's going to be the big push. This is just something that ended up happening really fast for us and I don't know if it's going to be a hog mountain kind of deck. I didn't push and I didn't play it so hard and I'm a little thrown off from those 2v2s which I have a really fun 2v2 video. Some of the better matches, some of the quicker matches towards the end of the stream that we were able to, uh, you know, do a little more, do a little, uh, do a little different commentating. I, 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 a couple little things, you know what I'm trying to say? But little beards, that's what you got to do here is trick them. You got to put princesses on the left side and put miners and different troops on the right side and force them to play against the odds with their cards. They are going to need to adjust to cards like the princess and the electric wizard and the miner. When somebody, if you don't, if you don't attack a miner, if it hits your tower and connects three or four times, it'll take the whole tower down. Not not three or four actual swings of the of the shovel per se, but three or four card plays. And that's one of the big things that I didn't recognize about the cycle decks is that you want to get all the cards out of the deck. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but the things that I've learned recently from playing this game is that you want to get rid of your arrows, you want to get your log out, you want to get these cards that you're typically saving to learn what the other player has. So you want to just kind of, you want to be elusive, like you, like for me, I don't always like to show them everything that I have, but there is a moment in time where you've got to get through your rotation so you don't get stuck in a bad rotation. And that's one thing that I've been doing in this deck very well. So let's break it down a little bit differently. As the decks come out, they're gonna all be a little different, like there's a P.E.K.K.A. in this deck, and we got Miners, we're gonna be playing against Hogs, we're gonna be playing against a couple things. But this is definitely a cool jungle arena deck. One that's fun, one that, that's cool to play with. And one thing about this game that I've noticed recently is winning all the time and pushing as high as you can in trophies is definitely a way of playing this game. But then there's another way of playing the game where you're just having fun learning about the different cards. You're not going to know how to use, say, an Executioner and a Miner together or a Furnace and a Goblin Gang. Or, you know, you're not going to learn these different styles of decks by just pushing and pushing 
pushing and pushing and getting high as you can and as far as you can using the same deck. Now I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people out there who've got tons of things to argue about that, but from my experience and from me playing the game and not somebody who just happened to download Clash Royale and then just simply be freakishly good at it. I've played games before where I've just been freakishly good at the game out the gate and don't understand why. I mean, as far back as say Halo 3 or Modern Warfare 2 and 3, like for some reason, the, the way my brain operates, the way the game works, you're just freakishly good at some games. Now, this one has required a lot of patience, like a lot of pay. Honest, I'm gonna put this out there and say that I might not even be playing this game if it wasn't for you guys. If it wasn't for the fun of the channel and and just trying to do something a little outside the box. Like games like Hearthstone. I played Hearthstone probably for about three or four months. Committed. Commit I mean when I say committed, I was committed to the cause. Like on that website trying to build decks for, you know, I don't even remember the name of it now, maybe the arena or something, but trying to build decks for those challenge, trying to get up to 12 wins and you know, this and that. And I, I ultimately I deleted the game multiple times from my iPad, never really played on my phone, but multiple times from my iPad. And I think it's on my computer. Maybe I'll have to go back and give it a shot or two, but none the less these type of games tend to really like frustrate me. Ones that require um, patience. Video games, the, the, it's not you. I'm not used to having patience in a video game, you know. And this game is very. You have to be very patient. You have to be very patient when you lose to decks that are stronger than you, and you're like, oh wow, that's a cool combination. But then you try and use it, and it doesn't work as well. And you're like, oh yeah, that was because the guy's cards were a little bit better. Now, granted, I know there are people out there who are level eights and they're all the way up in legendary and stuff like that. You just you, you're an anomaly, man. Don't act like because you're an anomaly that everybody's supposed to be at that level because it's not the case. You know, we have a couple people in our clan who are very, very, very good players and they are constantly getting frustrated with people who are learning and you got to be careful of that. You can't think that everybody's going to understand the game the same way you do and go out of your way to dummy down your your the way that you teach people how to play games. And I think that's really important. Um, to know, a good player isn't one who always wins. A good player is one, especially in a clan, who has other clan mates winning. That's one thing in Clash of Clans that I've prided myself on, is being able to help my buddies learn different raids, different styles of fighting. Now in Clash Royale, I felt like we did tear up a little bit. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but I did feel like we learned some definitely important tricks and specific things on where to play musketeer but this is what i was talking about before go ahead and get your miner down on the left hand side get those fire spirits to connect in the tower get your princess and get your musketeer to get a couple hits and now he played a great electric wizard there which froze us up from being able to get any pressure off now he's going to play this balloon the balloon is here but we're going to play our furnace and we got double furnaces down furnace one of my favorite cards underused in the lord beardo camp you guys know that we were stuck on the Lava Hound for a minute. And then the 2v2s came out, and we got the Electric Wizard, the Miner, and the Log all at the exact same time. So I thought to myself, why not throw them all in a deck? Why not learn them the fast way? Even if we're losing, let's learn them the fast way. Let's see why we lose. Let's see what cards beat them so well. And I got to say that I really believed that one of my favorite cards in this game was going to be the Princess, and it is. I absolutely love the versatility of the princess. You can hide her in matches. Well, a lot in 2v2. That was one of my favorite things to do is to hide her around the arena where her, her long distance shooting ability plays defense on their attacking army. And it's such a cheap play for how much damage you can get in an unsuspected way. Uh, a lot of princess play at the bridge got me in trouble. I played a lot of princesses at the bridge. I'm pretty sure Oz wasn't cool with all those. But what are you going to do, man? I, you got to learn. You, you, know, you, you don't learn by winning all the time. You learn by losing. There, there's truth behind that. So we're going to go ahead, get down this giant skeleton, take that this E-Wizard, and get ourselves into a position to win this again. We got to get Princess and Musketeer at the bridge for this particular deck. Unless there's just a way that I have yet to kind of figure out what the win condition is. But unfortunately, 
unfortunately this deck really only has one win condition from what I've experienced um, sometimes the e-wiz gets to the tower and that'll just vaporize a tower I think that's usually just kind of a bad player or somebody who is maybe waiting for and that's what's kind of happening right here once we go ahead and get this giant scale. oh now the e-wizard evaporated that's the quick thing about him too he doesn't have tons of strength but man when you keep him alive we got 599 left hand tower and what I was about to say is a deck that requires long building time uh, you know a push deck beat down deck something that requires building up your troop strength that is going to be a little bit underpowered for the way that we can quickly cycle through our cards with this deck so super fun I mean I don't know give it a try guys that you might you might not like it you know a lot of times you guys will give me deck recommendations I'll play it for one or two times I'll be like nah I ain't into that dude don't don't hey don't feed me this bull crap deck so you think you like and and they don't work out for me so I don't know give it a try see if you like it see if you don't we got those level 10 dollar skeletons and we got those level 10 arrows so people are probably like yo you should definitely be in hog mountain if not legends and you're probably right but but and i and big big there's a big but uh, is that we need to learn other styles we didn't buy all the decks we didn't buy magicals or super magicals we spent i downloaded the game way back when with the canadian release and played it for a while this account started out <laughs> with an international tag to it we played it all through the beginning and then i think i started to kind of get tapped out on the game right when they really started releasing a lot of the legendary cards and i was just kind of like I just, I just, I just didn't see the grind. Look at this guy. He's got a level eight hog and a level eight musketeer. Here we go. We got a miner that's gonna tank a little bit here. Our e wizard, can he survive through this? And the e wizard with barely any strength whatsoever is gonna get backed up by the princess for a couple shots. And look at the tower is under. <laughs> 1700 excuse me so we're ahead on this one little beards and that's what I'm trying to talk about it takes time to learn the game it takes time to learn specific cards the lava hound fit into our style very very well but since 2v2 I've tried to go back to it because I'm like oh yeah that's the quickest way to hog mountain in my opinion lava hound lava hound lava hound air attack lava hound balloon stuff like that like just being able to play a group of cards that is tough for somebody who doesn't have those counter cards. See, sometimes you can get into a match where they have electric, I mean, e-barbs, and, and I have a deck like this, and we just continue to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and it ends up being a draw or a really long match. And you guys know that when you get me in these long matches, I tend to just, like, fall asleep halfway through. It's that super ADD that I have. Um, it doesn't allow me to make it through full matches with full concentration. So we do our best to get the matches done within those first three minutes. That was something that the 2v2, that was one of my big goals in 2v2 actually was to get the matches beat within the first three minutes. Not a lot of overtime. And that first night, I mean, I must have played so much with King Dan, one of our co-leaders, and... It was just non-stop three-minute wins or losses. That was the way it was going to be. Look at that fireball at the bridge, but we got a miner. It seems like he's a bit out of elixir. There's the princess. Another set of arrows. We got a level eight hog smashing us down. The electric wizard stops him with 71 hit points left on our tower with 13 seconds. The fireball isn't going to connect because he's a level 10, but check out the E wizard in the clutch with four seconds left he's not gonna get it done and there is a different win condition and I was telling you about that there's not too many different styles of winning with this particular deck it's minor in the front trying to connect on those fire spirits whenever possible and that's about as much damage as say a fireball or something along those lines so there is good damage in this deck it's super fun it's very versatile and it allows you to practice using a bunch of different legendaries Beardos, hope you had fun watching go ahead and check out some other vids if you guys are seeing this for the first time much love. Peace out.